Hello everyone and welcome to the Fusing Shop channel. In this video, you're going to be watching me make an inside out marble. This is pretty much the same technique as making an inside out pipe, uh, except we're going to be using it to make a marble instead. And the results are pretty cool. This is the first time I was trying this out with a marble. So it was an experiment and I think it, the end result looks pretty cool. So uh, I'll show that at the end of the video. Uh, if you could just kindly hit that like button for me real quick, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much for supporting me in the fusing shop. Um, yeah, so I left timestamps in the description below. So you could skip around the video if you would like to do that. The first thing I'm going to be doing here is dropping on some silver fume. Now, um, as I say in all the videos where I use fume, you must have good ventilation when you use fume because you are vaporizing metal. And you don't want to breathe that in and get, you know, metal in your lungs. So make sure that you have a good fan, good ventilation before you do anything with fuming. You could see that fume, that little mirrorly, mirror kind of coating on there. It's looking pretty good. I use the heavy fume on this. I like to go a little bit heavier. Uh, it's up to you how much you want to do. And now I'm going to be dropping some clear to protect that fume that we just put on. So I have a three millimeter rod. I'm just going in and dropping some dots on the inside. And you don't have to make just dots. You can make lines or squigglies or shapes or whatever, you know, floats your boat. This is your art. You can make it how uh, you think looks good. One thing that's important is that when you make the funnel shape like I did here, I flared out a 25 millimeter rod to make this uh, kind of bell looking shape is that you really stress out the glass. The glass does not like to be stretched out that like that. So you constantly need to be reheating it every couple of uh, sets of dots or lines or whatever. This way you will not crack your glass. Again, it's super easy to crack. There's a ton of stress in that glass right now. You will see that I continue to flash it um, every couple minutes. Right now I'm playing a little bit of gold and that's just around the edge. That's why give us a little bit more uh, color mix in there. The f I like fuming with both silver and gold. I think it makes a really nice combination and you get so many different colors with these two metals. And back to making the uh, the dots. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not picking back to make the dots. I'm actually putting <laughs> some more silver on uh, at this point. And then I'll go back to making the dots. It's it's coming. It's coming. All right. So got some more fume on there. And again, this also gives it a multi-layer effect too. As you continue to drop more things down. I am using, uh, I forgot what color this was. Uh like penumbra or something like that. It's a North star glass. I'll, I'll see if I could find it later and leave it in the comments below, but just adding some color now and I'm kind of making like a little squiggly pattern with this. Again, you can make lines. You could use cane also to do this cane cane looks really, really awesome. I'm a big fan of like clear and color cane. So um, just go ahead and drop whatever you want on the inside of your uh, your bell here. Now I'm going to go back to making dots. Dots are fun to make and it's good practice because my hands are like extremely shaky when when I do this. So for me, it's like good practice to practice uh, my stability. So in previous videos, you might see me like shaking like a maniac. Just I'm working on it, people. I'm doing the best I can here. Oh, another important thing. Uh, that orange plug on the on the right is important so the flame does not travel up the tube. So make sure if you are um, doing a project like this that you put a plug. That's just an ear plug. Uh, bought at the drugstore. Oh, and there's my subscribe a reminder. If you guys could kindly subscribe to my channel, it uh, really helps me out. And helps with the algorithm and you guys know the drill already. We're not we're not new to the internet here. So thank you so much for uh, your your support and uh, supporting me, the fusing shop and my family. It's greatly appreciated. Right now I'm just uh, hitting the uh, the bell with some you know reducing flame and an oxidizing flame to kind of strike that that fume a little bit more. And I'm also going to be start closing down the, the bell shape as well, because we want to condense this and get this down into a nice solid piece of glass. 
So just roll it on the Marva and reheat. Again, we're going to do this for a little bit. If you want to skip ahead, again, I left timestamps in the description below for you guys. Um, anything I could do to make the videos better or more easy to follow, please let me know in the comments below. You guys have been amazingly helpful. Um, and thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Uh, as many of you asked for to, you know, uh, show the finished project at the end, I have done that in this one. So, and I will be doing that moving forward. And that's because of you guys and your feedback. So good stuff. Good stuff, everyone. One thing that you want to try to do is keep your rotations even. I did smush the glass a little bit too hard here when I was doing that previous rotation. But you want to kind of try to keep it smushed down and nice and even, as even as you can. You know, just practice, practice, practice. That's really what it is. Right now I'm using my tweezers to pull it to more of a point. And that's going to help the glass move and condense down a little bit faster. Right now I'm using the outer fire, my GTT uh, Mirage, and it has a tremendous amount of firepower. Um, if you can use the inner fire, it will take you much longer because it's a lot of glass that we're moving right now. Using the Marver, rolling that down, condensing it down some more. It's still actually open and hollow, and you want to get rid of all, all that empty space in the middle. And of course, you want to avoid trapping air bubbles along the way as well. And it, it's all possible. Just be patient, melt everything down nice and tight, and you should be fine. I will be doing another um, few marble, except doing an implosion on, uh, after we blow a bubble. So that might be the next video. We will see. We will see what comes up. Oh, also, this is a good time to point out that I do have videos on Patreon. I have about 11 videos there, and um, a lot of them are with uh, working on a lathe. So if you do have a lathe and you're not sure where to go or how to use it, I recommend uh, signing up for that. It's only like 10 bucks, so and you get access to all the videos, which is pretty cool. And you learn how to make a whole bunch of stuff like... Um, nectar collectors and i made a mini bong on mini bong on there and a whole bunch of other cool lathe projects also how to make a spoon on a lathe which is uh, really fun and awesome oh uh back to the video here i'm sorry getting distracted i add a little bit of twist to just kind of randomize it a little bit more and just showing you how cool that looks seeing the uh, hot glass is always is always amazing and i still even after doing this for you know um three, four years, it's still, it still is awesome. So <laughs> I still don't get, I still don't get over it. It's still uh, really cool to, to look at. Okay. What we're going to start doing now is I'm going to flame cut off the side with the tube. So going in there, changing my flame a little bit, getting everything nice and hot. Again, making sure you don't trap any air bubbles. Oh, I am not going to flame cut. I am actually, <laughs> I am sorry, people. <clears throat> My apologies. Um, I try to think when I watch the video on where I'm going to go next, and then I rewatch it, and I think I'm going to do something, but I don't. And... Um, yeah, I'm just doing my best here. So uh, my, my apologies. <laughs> I'm just going to call it as I see it, and hopefully that'll that'll work out. So right now, I'm getting ready to roll that in the marble mold based on that I'm holding the marble mold in my hand. Or I hope that's what I'm going to do next anyway. And we're going to start rounding this off already. We're going to round off one side, and we're going to punty up, flame cut off the other side, and round off the other one. You can see that that glass is starting to round itself off nicely. And that's just from holding the tip in the flame. Uh, can't get the camera to focus. It's really hard to get the camera to focus on glass people. So know that I do my best. There we go. Well, good enough. Okay. Here I'm going to attach a uh, cold seal punty. This way it's easy to break off when um, we go to round off the other side of the marble. 
So just get one side of that glass nice and juicy hot. And gently touch them together. And rotate everything on center. And you should be good to go. To flame cut, just keep the glass in the fire. Rotate it in the same spot. Nice even rotations. Since I'm flame cutting off a tube, it is a little bit different. I'm actually going to let it thin out below a really thin bubble. See how thin that glass gets. And then we're going to pop that bubble and let the glass cut itself. There you see, just popped and the glass just almost automatically cuts because the glass is so thin. Now I do have a little bit of extra glass that I'm going to peel off on here. Again, not wanting to trap any air bubbles as we do this. So we're going to smush the glass down and peel off anything extra. Let's go around, keep the glass that you want to peel off in the flame and just touch your rod to it and it should come right off for you. Make sure you cut your glass in the flame and not outside to avoid making really thin stringers. Always cut your glass in the flame. You don't want those really fine, fine hair glass stringers around. You get splinters and they easily, they snap easily and they're really hard to see. So I always vacuum off my work area to make sure that I get rid of all those tiny little, tiny little, uh, stringers that my students drop. And if you have stuck with me up until this, uh, 12 minute mark, I have a dad joke for you as your treat. Um, and it is, and I gave away all my dead batteries today and they were free of charge. I'm a very kind person and like to give. So <laughs> always looking for opportunities to give to people. All right. So now we're going to be doing exactly what we did before. Heating up, dropping in the marble mold. You can see my punty is not on center right now which makes it a little bit tricky with rounding. So what you should do in this case, and I'm doing it right now, as you can see, is heat that rod a little bit and let that marble drop off into place and get centered up. And it makes your life way easier. Things are always going to go wrong in glass blowing, so it's good to know that going in and very important to know how to fix the uh, mistakes when they happen. So again, I've been doing this a long time and I would say about 50% of my punties are not on center. So I do my best uh, to get them, you know, as centered as I can, as can be, but you know, things happen and you're not always perfect. So there's no problem with just cracking it off or um, melting it and straightening it. Just different ways of doing the same thing. So um, another reminder is before you go into the marble mold to let your marble cool down a little bit before uh, going in. Because if you go right into the mold, you will deform the glass like drastically and you'll make all these like little wrinkles and whatnot. So wait a couple seconds before going into the marble mold. Like count to like three is usually a good, good number. And then you can go ahead and gently place it down. Make sure you rotate as you put it uh, in the mold. This way you don't get uh, the glass and start to slump in the mold. Right now I'm going to attach another cold seal to the other side. And this way we could just finish rounding off the other, the other half. So just to get that tip nice and hot, touch the two together, crack off the one that we're not going to use anymore. And we're going to go ahead and just do the final rounding on this other half. Just be patient. Get a nice, just keep the very tip of the marble in the flame. You do not need to keep the whole thing in the flame like a lot of people think. You just keep the very tip of the glass in the flame and the glass knows what to do. Let the glass do its thing. Glass wants to just naturally be round. It's when we start trying to pull it and cut it and twist it that it gets all uh, upset. So we want to keep the glass happy and, um, you know, doing what we need it to do and doing what it likes to do naturally. So we got to work together with the glass. Know your material and it will help you greatly. So we are just about done with this. 
couple more rolls in the mold and uh, we'll be good to go. That's what it's looking like. This was before it cracked. Uh, I show at the end what uh, what it looked like after after it cooled off. And this is probably the reason why it cracked because I took it out of the flame and left it out for a while. Here's the finished marble. It actually cracked on me yesterday as I was trying to get a picture of it, but um, still stayed intact. And you could see how cool. You could see the spirally fume in there, and also the colored little sneaky things we dropped. And I'll show you, I have another one here. I did the same thing on this one. Oh, let's see if we can get into focus. The same inside out technique on this one, except I use only fume on this one. And it came out really, really nice. Really cool colors in there. And I did trap an air bubble, but I left it because I thought it looked pretty cool. So I left that in there. And yeah, just came out beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So try this out, guys. Send me pictures and let's see what you come up with. Thanks so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.